This is still uh, 3, 3 absolute value equations. So, um, what we talked about before, we had uh, absolute value of x equals to c means that x was c or x was equal to the opposite of c. Okay. Now this is assuming c is positive. Okay. If negative, we'll have something else. Alright, remember c greater than zero just means c is positive. Alright, um, but what, what I want you to understand is this literally means this is a setup. So it means if I have something like, you know, 5x in here, rather than just x, but it's equal to some number, then look what happens here compared to here. We take the bars away, okay, and there's one equation. Or, let's see, sorry, 15. Or, Five x equals negative fifteen. All right, and then we solve these two equations. All right, same way. Divide by five. Divide by five. All right, and we get x equals three, or x equals negative three. Okay, so it's very uh, similar to what we were doing before but now it's got um, an expression under there instead of just plain old x it's an expression and we have to solve the expression once we remove the absolute value bars and once we remove the absolute value bars and change the sign uh, of the second thing Alright, so something like um, the absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to 9. What does that mean? Well, it means that take away the absolute value bars. We got x minus 4 is equal to 9. Or x minus 4 is equal to negative 9. All right, and then just solve each one of these equations. So we add 4 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 13. Or, if we add 4 to both sides, we get x could be negative 5. Now, as important for you to understand, we can check these just like we did before. Check it by plugging that x in to the answer, and we get the absolute value of 13 minus 4, which is the absolute value of 9, which is 9. So that one checks. And then if we plug the negative 5 in there, uh, we get the absolute value of negative 5 minus 4, which is the absolute value of negative 9, which is also 9. So that one checks. Alright, so this, these are both... Uh, the same type of problem, if you look at this one and the last one, they're both the same type of problem. What did we do? We took away the absolute value bars and then we had one equation equal to the regular number, the other equation equal to the opposite of that number, and then we just solved whatever those two equations were one at a time. All right. So that's how we do an absolute value equation if it's just a line, something similar to just a, a line like that, those last two. Um, but it doesn't have to be a line inside that absolute value bars. It can be, in this example, something quadratic. All right, now what do we do? Well, just the same thing as before. One of the things we set up is 
just removing the absolute value bars. But the other thing we set up, and notice I'm giving myself a lot more space this time, is removing the absolute value bars and setting it equal to the opposite of this number. So if this is positive 6, we got it equal to negative 6. All right, and then we have quadratic equations. So we just solve the quadratic equations the way we always do, meaning we set them equal to 0. So on this equation, I have to subtract 6 from both sides. Now notice this is these are two different equations that I got going on here. Okay, so I, I'm separating the two. So on one side, I'm adding 6 to both sides. The other side, I'm subtracting 6 to both sides. And I get x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0 now because these wipe each other out. And the other one, I get x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. All right, and then I factor. All right, try to always factor first. All right, this is an x squared, so it's going to be x and x. All right, now we need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. So of all the things that multiply to negative 6, the only ones that add to negative 5 are negative 6 and 1. All right, and then if we solve this, we have to solve each one of these equations, x minus 6 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. And then for each one of those, if x minus 6 is equal to 0, we get x is equal to 6. If x plus 1 is equal to 0, then x is equal to negative 1. Alright, so for this part, when we set it equal to a positive 6 initially, we get those solutions. But we also have to go over here and solve the other side. So if I factor this, I get x and x again. But now I have two numbers multiplied to a positive 6 and add to a negative 5. So because this is positive, they have to have the same sign. And because this is negative, that same sign has to be a negative. All right, and now two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5 are going to be negative 3 and negative 2. And so now these are the two things that we solve. x minus 3 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0. So this ends up being x equals 3. This ends up being x equals 2. So all of these are solutions to the original. Uh, the absolute value of x squared minus 5x equals 6. Again, we could do like just like we did before. Plug in 6, plug in negative 1, plug in 3, plug in 2, and all of them would work. Uh, for instance, 3 squared is 9 minus 5 times 3 is 15. 9 minus 15 is negative 6, and the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. Okay. Uh, if I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 5 times negative 1 is plus 5, 1 plus 5 is 6, the absolute value of 6 is 6. All right, so all of these four, equations, or four solutions would work if we tried them in there. All right, the next type of equation we're going to talk about is uh, power functions. So a uh, power function is any function that looks like f of x equals uh, ax to the b power. All right, a and b are real numbers. and b is not 0. So some examples. Um, y, remember f of x, same as y. Uh, y equals 2x cubed. 
uh, something as simple as y equals x is a power function, right? B is not equal to zero. A is equal to one, right? So this uh, this would be a power function. Uh, but normally we, that's a line. But normally we would reserve it for something like y equals if that exponent were something other than one. So something like uh, four thirds, like a fractional power. Now I want to pull these. Uh, Alright, let me do one more example. Y equals 5 thirds. I want to pull these last two up just so, one, you can practice putting them in your calculator, but also just see the difference in their graphs. So I'm going to bring the, well, I want to bring the window down just a second so you can see what's going on. All right, so I'm going to put in y equals x to the four thirds power. So x, remember that caret is the raised to, and then parentheses four thirds, close parentheses, and then hit graph. So here's the graph of y equals x to the four thirds power. All right, now that's y equals x to the four thirds. If I'm going to put uh, that with this graph. All right, so there's the graph of the y equals x to the four thirds. Now I'm going to go back in here and change that to a five thirds. All right, and I want you to notice the difference. All right, so here is the graph of y equals x to the five thirds. Now what I want you to notice from this is that when we have um, equations that have four thirds because of this symmetry that takes place because of the fact they turn back up and they hit the same y values more than once notice like right here here's one All right if I go left and right I have two different x's that produce one as their y here's three I have two different x's that produce three as their y but that doesn't happen when it's a, a five thirds so when this thing bends, I only have one thing that produces uh, every number, every y value. All right, this is what we call a one-to-one -one function. All right, now why is that important? Well, it means that that solutions to um, x to the m over n equals some number c has two solutions if m is an even number Alright, so when we have an even number, like the four thirds was even, if we have some spe uh, specific point, again, like let's say that that's the, the number that we're looking for, um, that we got x to the four thirds equals two. Okay? Well, this thing hits two multiple times because of the symmetry whatever x hits it the positive x version that hits it the negative x version will also hit it all right so the next video uh, i'll show you will have some examples of uh power equations and solving a power equation